Well, as you all know, this is March, and it's Women's History Month. It's a month where we celebrate women's uh, contributions to our society, especially women leaders. Uh, our guest speaker today is the former Lieutenant Governor Kim Budanyan, who was New Jersey's first Lieutenant Governor when the position was created in New Jersey. She served for eight years under Governor Chris Christie. She also held the position of Secretary of State under Governor Christie. Prior to that, she was the first female sheriff of Monmouth County. Before we bring Lieutenant Governor uh, Guadagno up to speak, I'd like to introduce our esteemed mayor, uh, Mayor Armstead, to come up and say a few words, and also Councilman Peter Brown, who was instrumental in making this event happen today. Mayor. Uh, she's a trailblazer. Uh, she has done some extraordinary things in her life, uh, and she is a role model, and you should all look to her for guidance and direction. And uh, Councilman Brown has a banner, uh, because we're celebrating Women's History Month this month, uh, and we had banners. Uh, last month was the African American History Month. This month is Women's History Month, and we acknowledge all the great things that women have done to make this country great, uh, to make our city great, and we have a banner, and we're going to I'm going to let Councilman Brown show it to the ladies and gentlemen in the audience. Have ever seen it yet? <laughs> wow. How awkward is that? It's <laughs> <laughs> much younger than your teachers and your principals and your superintendent, um, thank you for inviting me and being so generous and welcoming and open-minded um, and also um, allowing me to say a few words to you guys about how I ended up standing here in front of you right now. Um, I literally got the best possible education I could and that's my advice to you. Get the best possible education you can. I know the teachers in the room love to hear that but I really truly mean it because I went to college, then I went to law school, then I worked in a big firm in New York City for a while. I got the best possible education I could afford so that later on, when I got opportunities to run for office, um, I could do it. Not because I was qualified so much as I didn't have anything to lose. What do I mean by that? The worst that could happen to me if I ran for elective office and lost was I go back and do what I wanted to do in the first place, which was practice law. Mm -hmm. I got, then I got a chance to do something else. Somebody called me on the phone and said, would you like to be the first female sheriff in, this, in Monmouth County's history? And I said, sure, why not? Nothing to lose, everything to risk, it was time. The fun part of the job is running for the office of sheriff. Because, as mentioned, you know, I don't look like a sheriff, do I? When you say sheriff, you know, when you said sheriff, when the mayor said sheriff, didn't you look twice? A sheriff isn't blonde haired, wearing a skirt with high heels. A sheriff has a 10 gallon hat, two Smith and Wessons on their side, on their hips, and um, a uniform, right? And you know what, that's what people thought when I ran for office. I actually had a man ask me the following question in that screening process, and yes, it's the 21st century. The question was as follows, you have three kids. How are you going to take care of them if you have to go to work? Really? But I answered the question, and then a couple of the um, politicians, female politicians in the room, took the poor man outside and took care of him. Because you can't ask questions like that anymore. We make it work, right? Your parents, how many here have parents, both parents work, right? Right, you make it work. Anyway, I was a sheriff for two years before I got a call from now Governor Christie, who said, would you like to be the first lieutenant governor of the state of New Jersey? And I said, did you mean to call me? I didn't even know who he was, barely. But again, back to the story, if you have a really good education 
and you have nothing to lose, then you say yes. Who can ever say the following? No, I don't want to be the first lieutenant governor of the state of New Jersey. You can't say that. You get a shot, you get it, you take a shot. And we won. So for the women in the room, I was the acting governor, the lieutenant governor, the 33rd secretary of state, I got one salary. What's up with that? Same thing happens today, by the way. Um, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver, she is the head of the DCA, she is the Lieutenant Governor, and when Phil Murphy leaves the state of New Jersey, she's the acting governor, one salary. Now, come on, guys. Do you think that would happen if there were men in charge of the Lieutenant Governor's office? I cannot wait till the first Lieutenant Governor is a man, because that's when they'll give her a little extra salary for, uh, give him a little extra salary for the little extra work, or a lot of extra work he does all the time. But that's the world we live in. So, I think the very last words of wisdom I'd like to live, leave with you are, are two things, two things. First, never forget the people in this room. I mean, it's much easier to engage with them because of social media. Never forget them because you will need them and you will run into them over the next 40 or 50 years. They will become your base of whatever you want to do. Even if, even if you aren't friends now, you will touch base with them later. And the very last thing is you are the leaders of this high school. You are the leaders in your families. And as leaders, you have another responsibility. I call it reach as you rise. When you go home or when you go back out into those hallways, find someone that you can be the leader of. And I don't mean push around. I mean grab behind you and pull up with you. You already set a huge example, many of you, by putting that uniform on a couple of days a week. That's a huge example. But it's the touch that people need. Let them know that you will be there for them when they have to make the kinds of decisions that you've already made. So reach as you rise is how I would like to end this. Grab back and pay it forward by bringing somebody up with you. So um, thank you for everything you've done for me, Mayor. Thank you, Peter Brown. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. I know there's some questions. Ask the hard ones because I'm not going back into politics. Come on. <laughs> what would you say is your biggest struggle being a woman in the government, and what is your biggest accomplishment? The biggest struggle being a woman in government is that I'm a woman in government. Um, I always say policy is set by those people sitting around the table, and there aren't enough women sitting around the tables. And I was never a feminist until I got involved in politics. Never. 30 years as a lawyer and never had that kind of a problem. And then suddenly politics, boom. Um, and that just means we need to have more women or people of color or people who have a different background than the tradition. And I mean both parties. You know, you look at the parties, both parties in New Jersey, look at who the bosses are. White males. They are. They, they are. And it's time, you guys gotta fix that. I'm done, I did what I could. I'm all finished with that, I'm gonna earn a living. You have to fix it. This is now your problem going forward. My biggest accomplishment is doing, is taking the risk. You know, you had to make a decision. What were the chances a Republican was gonna win the governor's office this year? Do you care? No, if you're just committed to it. So I'm proud that I did it. I'm proud that I took the, sh the shot. Yes, sir? What are some of your thoughts on uh, teachers carrying firearms in the school should not do that? I mean, I just was at the Chamber of Commerce. They asked a similar question. Um, teachers aren't trained to carry guns in schools. Um, see, uh, resource officers are, class threes are, a lot of other officers are, but I don't think teachers should, <laughs> first of all, I don't think they should have to carry guns in school. Let's start with the premise. Um, but second, I think they have their hands full teaching under the circumstances that they have. And you add one more layer of it, it's just a, not a great idea in my opinion. Times where these stereotypical ideas of women in politics affected you? All the time. It's not as bad as we're making it out, but it is Women's History Month. So the question was, 
where there are times where stereotypical ideas hurt me in politics. But you run for a non-traditional office. The, the sheriff's office is always the best example. I was told I couldn't wear pink when I was campaigning. I was like, what? Why can't I wear pink? I have a whole commencement speech where I talk about you should, I, I actually even have a pink cap I wear when I give the speech because people won't remember the speech you give at commencement, but they'll remember that you wore a pink hat. And the message is you can be whoever you want to be. You can't, you can't have someone say, you can't be sheriff because you're a girl. Or you can't, as a, as a woman candidate, wear X, Y, or Z. You can't. I mean, the coolest thing, you, uh, running as a female candidate is very different. Hillary Clinton once said, it takes women two hours more a day to be prepared to run for office and campaign than it does a man. Because, and that's true. You have to do your hair, you have to do your makeup, you have to do your nails, you have to figure out if you're going to be a pantsuit lady, a skirt lady. Uh, that's not a complaint. It's a reality and you have to learn to deal with it. Uh, first of all, can we give another thank you, please, to former Lieutenant Governor, to Giordano, to our mayor, to our councilman, to bringing them here. Uh, so students, you had a tremendous opportunity today for the women in the audience, for our young ladies in the audience, you had the opportunity to learn that there are obstacles that you're gonna face. But remember what you learned here today, the lives that have been lived differently in spite of all of that. And know when you leave here and going forward from today on, that whatever it is that you can envision, you can accomplish. But you need to do some things. You need to work hard. Education matters, get that education. That will prepare you for whatever road you want, you want to travel. I'm so tremendously grateful, um, really, for taking the time to come here today to speak to our students. Students, you're the best. Another round of applause, please.